Hello world, welcome back to another podcast, Let's Talk Ags. Today is Wednesday, so you know what that means. College football fans, we're talking football. This week, we're here to discuss Texas A&M going to face South Carolina Gamecocks. If you are a Gamecocks fan, welcome to the podcast. If you are a Texas A&M fan, welcome back to the podcast. Let's 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 break a couple stuff down that I see from South Carolina as we go into this matchup this Saturday. Well, the first thing I want to say, South Carolina is uh, coming off a two and three record right now in conference play. They are <clears throat> a team that I'm actually a little bit excited to play uh, this week, and I'll, I'll get into that a little bit uh, shortly, but. Uh, I remember uh, when Steve Spurrier was over there with the with the South Carolina. South Carolina. Uh, that was a great matchup. Kevin Sumlin's uh, year here, and they were coming in ranked, and nobody thought we were going to beat them, and we came out and we blew y'all out. I mean, what, what a story! I I have memories of that to this day, man. It it was awesome, and I really look forward to this matchup. Um, first of all, I'll get into the positive thing that I see with South Carolina this year um, in this 2020 season. So, first of all, South Carolina has a pretty average uh, um, third down defense. Um, they, they're they giving up about 36% uh, to, to opponents on third down. So, that's a pretty, that's a pretty average, pretty solid third down defense. And so we are definitely definitely going to have to make uh, the most of our third downs. But South Carolina, you are also facing the number one team when it comes to third down uh, conversion. Our offense is number one in converting third down. So this should be an uh, advantage Texas A&M, but it will be interesting to see how we handle uh, their defense because this is something that they're, they're, they're pretty solid at. Um, the next thing, despite being known for their uh, for their running offense, South Carolina actually calls the game very balanced on on offense. They call as much as fifty one percent pass run uh, as far as their offense goes. So they may be known for heavy running with uh, Will Muschamp over there coaching them up, but they actually call it pretty pretty. Evenly, so our defense will have to be ready for both the run and the pass, and and being able to stop both of those things. Um, uh, South Carolina's defense is very opportunistic. They uh, they make the most of what opponents give them. They are also very very scrappy. So when you have scrappy defenses, basically what they do, they don't force you into making mistakes. However, when you make your own mistakes, when you have self-inflicted mistakes, scrappy defenses take advantage of that. So if we have, if we come out, you know, this is a road game for us. If we come out to South Carolina and we don't play our A game, you know, if we don't bring uh, the right mentality to the game, they will uh, – take advantage of that, and they will, you know, make some plays on defense. Um, they, they are very scrappy on defense. Um, they have a Kyler Hill at quarterback. He's already passed over 1,000 yards on the season, and he can also run. So he can also take off with the ball if he needs to. Uh, he has a pretty good pocket presence, I would say, Um their their offense is uh he is uh completing pass percentages at sixty one percent which is middle of the pack it's not it's not great um but it's not horrible either um so so on offense they they're pretty average they're pretty average on offense um they do have a, a lot of playmakers though that they make they uh, take advantage of for one. Uh, they have uh, Shai Smith at, at wide receiver. Guy is a, a elite speedster, out, out of at receiver, and 
they also make sure they kind of use him the way that Texas A&M uses Anaya Smith. They they get him the ball any way that they can think of. You know, they get him on some jet sweeps. They do a lot of different things with him. Uh, throw some uh, throw some. Uh, they use him in all types of ways, man. I, I'm going blank right now, but uh, Sean Smith is somebody that we really need to look out for uh, for our defense. Throw some screens. That's what I was trying to think of. Throw some screens to him, all types of stuff, uh, to get him out in space. Uh, our defense is going to have to play, you know, play him with uh, one over the top because he can, he can speed by you. All right. Uh, the, another playmaker that they have on offense is uh, Kevin Harris at running back. Dude is very fast as well. I would I would say just as fast as uh, Shai Smith. Kevin Harris can run the ball. He's very very uh, mobile. He he's dangerous out in space. You know he reads his blocks well, and uh, he's able to you know burn safeties if they take a wrong angle at him. So. He's also doing very well. He's he's uh, averaging 5.8 yards per carry uh, every, every attempt. And so he's somebody that uh, Buddy Johnson, I I'm, I look forward to that matchup between him and Buddy Johnson. Um, I expect uh, for them to be able to run the ball after, I, after what I just saw with uh, the last game against Arkansas and them being able to run the ball. We have a very – top uh, run defense at Texas A&M. However, we have been known to be susceptible. So, guys will have to play um, guys will have to play uh, win their matchups. They will have to win their matchups because uh, this, this South Carolina offense has a lot of speed on it. Okay? Uh, they have a guy, Moose, at tight end, big body guy, hard to bring down, hard to tackle. He's able to break some tackles if he if he uh, is in if he's in space. They'll probably use him in the red zone, tight zone, if uh, if they are uh, in a, in a four wide or anything like that. They might sneak him out uh, to try to get him loose. So he's somebody that we definitely have to pay attention to as well. Um, uh, I don't expect I don't expect anything less. He he's averaging 14.4 yards per reception. So he's these are big play guys right here. Uh, those three guys on the defensive side of the ball. South Carolina has Ernest Jones, uh, the team leader in tackles for them. He he's all over the field. I watched uh, some film of him against uh, Vanderbilt. I watched him against uh, they played LSU. And he's 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 the real deal. Like he's he's a he's a great uh, linebacker for them. Um, similar to Buddy Johnson for us, um, he's just all over the field. He's he's in the right places where where they want him to be. So uh, look for that matchup between him and Isaiah Smith. Uh, hopefully, we are able to do some things schematically to 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 get him trapped up to get him you know. On, on a couple of our old linemen when we get to the second level. That way he's not a factor in that run in that run defense. Um, and then they have a couple of other guys on the D-line. They have Thomas, and I don't know if I'm going to say his name correctly, but Nagbar, I believe that's his name, on the D-line. They, they have a combined seven sacks together as a tandem there. So they are able to... Again, I said this 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 team is very scrappy. This defense is very scrappy, and um, they are able to get a couple sacks if if, uh, if they're put in the right position. And speed, speed, speed is everywhere, man. Speed is everywhere for the South Carolina team. Uh, as more specifically in the skill position, but as well on that D line. Uh, what I'm getting what I'm gonna get into now is what I see as far as our where we can take advantage as a as a team, where our advantages would be uh, for Texas A and M. This team, yes, they are scrappy. Yes, they fight and claw, and they and they they are opportunistic and all that. But they lack size 
on the defensive line. Um, that's something that's very important in the SEC. I mean, this is something that we we kind of struggled with in past years uh, before this season when Texas A&M's offensive line was really struggling. We really struggled against speed rushers on the, on the edges. Our, ty- our, our tackles were not able to hold up against speed rushers. They hit a little spin move or whatever against um, – Against uh, Dan Moore and 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 they you know they were free we we were sacked but this year we we've been playing a lot better against both speed rushers and power rushers and we have some uh, running back help on chip blocks and 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 tight end uh, sustaining blocks so uh, I feel like we're gonna do a lot better against this type of uh, defense this year and um, that's something that's gonna play in our favor because they're because they're so so. Uh, so small, uh, we'll be able to, uh, you know, put our will uh, against them. We'll be able to push them around. I feel like we're going to have a big running game this this game, and you may not see as many passes. Or, you know, you know, knowing Jimbo, he might want to keep things balanced even if the run is, is successful. So look for the run to establish the pass this game. That's my, that's my uh, take on that. Um, their O line play, South Carolina O line play is not very well, not very good, not very good at all. Uh, they got sacked, I don't know, uh, three or four times uh, by Vanderbilt. You know, we took we took one sack by Vanderbilt uh, over the over the bye week. They bumped it up to two because one supposedly didn't get recorded right or whatever. So all in all, we had two sacks on the year, and they both came to Vanderbilt. But however. That was our first game of the season. We were still getting our feet wet. We weren't established as we are right now. Had we played Vanderbilt right now, I don't think you would see them getting that, getting those one or two sacks that they got against us. So the fact that they gave up uh, three, uh, three or more sacks to Vanderbilt shows me that we are going to be able to get pressure on that quarterback. We're going to be able to get pressure on that quarterback. He is going to be in trouble, and so um, he's gonna make mistakes. He's gonna make mistakes, and I'm looking for I'm looking for our our uh, secondary to make some plays this week. We we haven't been making very many plays as far as interceptions go. We had some we had a lot of plays early as far as forcing fumbles with that great D line, uh, the Marvin Leal and, and Buddy Johnson for, forcing those fumbles for us early. Uh, we need to get some interceptions, man. We need the secondary to start showing signs of life because right now they are the weakness of the team. Uh, we, we've, we've progressed and we've improved on every aspect of the team uh, except for the secondary. And Leon O'Neal, you are a leader back there. Um, uh, Damani Richardson, you are a leader back there. We need you guys to, you know, gather around each other, figure out the communications you need, and then go out there and ball because you, we know that you can. You know, that's why we recruited you to Texas a and If y'all are watching this, you know, we believe in you. You got what it takes. You got the right coaching. You got the right university, the right training rooms, everything like that. Just go in there and work hard, man. Go in there and work hard. Turn it around. You can do it. If, if our O-line can go from one of the worst in the league to the best or one of the best in, in a matter of a year, I, I have faith that this the secondary to, can get it together by this season, so that if we get into a playoff run, you know we are we'll be all right. So that's what I'm saying from them. Um, as far as uh, as far as their secondary goes, they they are not uh, very disciplined with the eyes in the secondary. We should be able to get some some guys free with our receivers. We should be able to scheme some things and get some guys free, which is why I said that, you know, look for the run to open up the pass against them. Look for the run to open up the pass because once that run gets established, they're going to start putting people in the box, and we're going to have, regardless, we're going to have people running free. In the back, I I look for some. If the protection is there, 
I look for some some deep throws to get thrown, especially with Hezekiah coming back. This is his second game back, and he's gonna be more than ready to to you know run some run some more routes. Uh, that yes, last week was uh, his his introduction back into football after not playing since 2018, I believe. So I look for him to 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 be even more ready than he was last week. Um, also look for a nice to keep doing the same thing he's been doing. Look for a spiller, Isaiah Spiller, to do the same thing he's been doing. Um, South Carolina fans, if you don't know these guys, Isaiah Spiller, Anaya Smith, Jalen uh, uh, Watermere, you need to look these guys up because you're going to be hearing their names a lot on Saturday. And I just want you to hear from me. I told y'all that these, go, these guys are going to ball out. They're going to do what they do, and, and Texas A&M will come away with this victory. I do look forward to this game. I do believe there's going to be plays made on both sides, uh, considering how much speed is on South Carolina's side. I have to be realistic and say they're going to score some points against our defense. Our defense is not uh, a, a, a complete, let's say, at this moment. And uh, that elite speed is, is going to get some plays on us. And, and um, I feel like I feel like it's, it's I, I feel like it, it could be a close game early, but I don't I don't think that South Carolina can stop our run, and I believe. With Kellen playing the way he's playing, he's been so consistent the past three weeks that he's going to continue that consistency and we'll be able to have a pass game and a run game that South Carolina cannot stop. Jimbo's going to have that opportunity. We saw in the press conference, he said, you know, when asked why didn't he, uh, what what could he have done better, he said, shoot, I wish we would have, we we didn't put up 80 to zero on him, you know? Uh, so, so Jimbo is not going to be satisfied, and I love that in in our coach. Uh, Jimbo uh, is is friends with Will Muschamp. They know each other very well. They probably schemed each other more than a couple times. So, early it should be it should be a test match. Early it should be a test match because both these coaches know each other very well. But overall, talent will take over, and Texas A and M is the more talented team at this time. Look for us to come away with the dub on Saturday. My score prediction, guys. My score prediction for this game is Texas A&M, 31, South Carolina, (laughs) South Carolina, 20. That's my score prediction, guys. 31 and 20. Texas A&M takes it, and we keep on rolling. Keep this, keep this, keep this train rolling, bro. Man, I'm so, I'm so proud of my guys for coming out of the, out of the off week, with that mindset that, hey, hey, we here to work. We here to work, and and we're not seeing no slacking off. We ain't seeing guys, you know, opting out in the middle of the season. All that all that foolishness is out the way, and we 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 here to to prove a prove a point. You know what I'm saying? We are here to prove a point. Nobody expected Texas A&M to be a top ten team at this point in the season. You know what I'm saying? And nobody's gonna expect us to do what we finna do. And what we about to do is we about to run the table. I told you guys the only person, the only team that has catching my attention. At this point in time, is Auburn. Well, that's my score prediction for this week. Texas A&M visiting South Carolina. Hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. Stick with me. Come back uh, for post-game reaction. I do it on Mondays usually. Is when I upload. You know, if I'm wrong about this, if I'm wrong about this game, South Carolina fans, let me know in the comments. Let me know how I'm wrong. Let me know what I missed, what I forgot, what I didn't think about, or what I'm wrong about. You know, let me know. 
I'll see you guys after the game.